had a message on my answering machine. Um, hi, I'm trying to reach Carlton. This is Madonna. And I was like, what the fuck? For people from my generation, we were able to follow you and see you back when the Blonde Ambition Tour happened and when Truth or Dare came out. I saw the film a little bit later when I grew up and growing back in Puerto Rico, obviously I didn't have a lot of that in my small town yeah. of being able to see like the gay community in what we call El Apogeo, like right there in mm -hmm. front of you and for it to be okay. So when you see stuff like this, at that moment, you inspired a whole generation that was able to just come out and say, you know what, this is who I am, right. I'm going to be fabulous, I'm going to be flamboyant, I'm going to do whatever I want, and it's okay. And I feel like now, with this documentary, you're going to be inspiring a new generation that has no idea that this ever happened, right. and they're going to be able to see this, respect what you did, and be themselves. How do you feel about now touching a new generation with what you did 20 years ago? It's still... Honestly, it's still so humbling to hear that, you know, and to, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, know, know that, you know. People take for granted what they put out into the world because other people are always affected, watching, hearing you. And so for us to have the opportunity you know, again, first with Truth or Dare and now with Strike or Pose to reach a new generation of, you know, gay, lesbian, straight, not, you know, Latino community is, you know, it's, it's a gift. It really is a gift. And so we don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. And uh, we're humbled by it, definitely. All of us. All of us dancers are. Tip the head a little straighter. Right there, chin down even more. Good. Stay there. Even after my show with her was done, I was still in fake mode. You know, but I was still in the world, even though the tour has ended, I'm still in the world trying to represent what they saw me as, which was Super Iron Man, kill it all and knock it all down. When I knew that I wasn't that. I knew that I wasn't that because when I had my other moments, I was petrified. And I was proving that I was weak because I wasn't standing up for myself. That's been a very... Um, gripping thing to have to undo. From me to me. How was the experience coming from the ballroom scene into the tour with Madonna and then where it took you? It seemed for me and for Jose, I, you know, because he's, he's, you know, the closest, you know, I'm the closest to Jose, you know. He's Dominicano, I'm Puerto Rican. We were, you know, we both grew up in the Lower East Side. So, you know, for me, it seemed like a natural progression. We were in the ball scene for a very long time and, and still are to some, uh, to some degree, Jose more than me. Um, he is now the father of the House of Extravaganza. And, um, and we're, we're both just very proud as with with just the gifts that we've been given and it seemed it really did seem like a natural progression you know we were taking what we love to do and we were representing our ballroom scene and you know and bringing it out to the masses and hopefully you know and and crossing our fingers that everybody liked it <laughs> i'm just glad that they did it <laughs> It felt like we never left. And that was really the one thing throughout that whole night that I kept thinking about. You know, it's like, wow, it's like I never left these guys. Like I just saw them last week and 
it was so, it was a really good feeling, but it was such a weird feeling because I was like, I wonder if other people who've toured, you know, in groups like that feel the same way. You know, because you really grow close. I mean, we traveled together, you know, everywhere. We did the show together. We ate together. And so, you know, we were really in this bubble, you know, uh, and, and led a really sheltered experience uh, during that time. So we grew really close to each other. So when I saw them again, it was like I had never left them. But I know him as a man who had the courage to tell the truth. The truth is, he was gay. The truth is, he had AIDS. And he said so to anybody who would listen. In memory of Keith, let's tell ourselves the truth. Let's tell it to each other. Let's face it together. It got fun for a little bit, you know, the gay scene, but then like with, with AIDS coming out and HIV, everyone got really scared. I think it was a time where um, something new was needed, something new and artistic, something out of the norm. It was timing more than anything in the 90s. I think it was the time when the world was ready for it. And it would take somebody like Madonna to, to, to bring that to the forefront. Why should people watch Strike a Pose? Why should people watch Strike a Pose? Well, I think they should watch it because they enjoy us. <laughs> yes. I enjoy you. <laughs> well, and it's also, I mean, you know, I feel that there's a message behind the movie. And, you know, the message is to continue to love yourself, uh, be good to yourself and know that you can overcome any obstacle that's put in front of you, whether it's drugs or alcohol, like it was for me, or, you know, HIV, or, you know, parents, you know, or, you know, or anything of the like, you know, for you to come out, be yourself, and claim, claim yourself, you know, to really claim yourself and say, this is, this is who I am, and, I want to put one foot in front of the other, being the best me that I can. And, I, and hopefully that movie reflects that and says that. It was a wild, high velocity family. Each one of us would have taken a bullet for each one of us. The sort of daring progressive message was that you can be gay and human. I want to be like those guys, be that sort of free and open. I saw two men kiss for the first time. Like, yeah. Do we care what people think of us? Yeah! Bring it back down. What's your secret? Faking that you're strong, faking that you are confident. Faking. Almost all of it. With AIDS coming out and HIV, everyone got really scared. It was terrifying. It was terrifying enough to scare people into silence. There was a whole other backstage, you know, that you didn't get to see, that none of us were ready to talk about. And it's hard because this is the first time, so... <laughs> Slow, slow, slow. Be proud, you know, be proud, whatever it is. Because everyone is someone.